Matthew chapter 13, pick up where we left off a couple weeks ago. As we've been marching through uh, Matthew, we've come to chapter 13 that begins Jesus teaching in parables. And if, if remember in taking notes, these last several weeks, parables are stories with a spiritual meaning or spiritual truth. I'm glad my wife is here this morning to remind me. Thank you, Joanna. All right. But Jesus begins with the sower, the seed, and the soils. And, and the disciples say, Jesus, why do you teach in parables? And he, Jesus basically says, their hearts, their eyes, their ears are not open. They will not understand. But I love what he says to the disciples. It has been granted to you by the Father to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And I want to declare it to God's people. God didn't give us his word so that we would be confused. He gave us his word so that we would have clarity, understand a little bit more of the heart of God. Are you with me on that? So I want to say to you, to you, has been granted by the Father to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It's been given to you. So how do we do that? Well, we unpack it a little bit on Sundays, but the greatest place is at home. The greatest place is at work, in your car, not while you're driving. Open the Word. Spend some time with the Lord and just allow Him to unpack into your spirit the truth of His Word. One of the things we talked about, the parable of the sower, the seed, the soil, is, is, is that our hearts are prepared to receive the word of God, that implanted word. Then Jesus talks about the wheat and the tares, and the enemy came and planted the tares. The tares look like wheat, but inside they are empty and they are poisonous. And we talked about how the enemy plants into the believer's ideas, concepts, philosophies that will actually lull us to sleep. And so I want to very carefully, very quietly proclaim to the church, stay awake! Do not be lulled to sleep. Know the true from the false. Are you with me? Okay. Then we went on to the mustard seed. Some of you didn't like my... my uh, that I don't like mustard. Now, it's really interesting. You know, being a pastor, um, quite often I'll share. I, I remember sharing one time that I don't really care for peas. Yeah. I just, you know, I don't know why. Mom used to hide them in casseroles. Even as a baby, I would spit them out on the floor. Just don't <laughs> like peas. And I go home after church, and there's a whole bowl of peas <laughs> on our front porch, you know. I, I'm so glad that people didn't give me bottles and bottles and bottles of mustard a couple weeks ago. Thank you for that. But I want to share with you one thing I do like, just in case any of you have the inclination. Go with me for a moment. I'm just a little boy. Some of you can't remember that far back. Just a little boy. And we're out at church and we go home and we open the front door and that pot roast hits you in the face. And the, the, the potatoes, can you smell it? But one of my favorite smells was the baking of those homemade rolls. Can I have a witness? Yeah, yeah I'm right. Those, those homemade rolls just, I don't care at that point about the beef. I don't care about the potatoes. I definitely don't care about the peas or whatever mom is serving. I want the homemade rolls. Can you smell them? Can you smell them? I'm going to invite you to smell those throughout the message, all right? Just keep you awake a little bit. It takes us now to this parable, chapter 13, verse 33, one verse. Another parable Jesus spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was leavened. Are you ready? So we, we're gonna, we've been plowing our hearts as we worship, as we fellowship. We're ready to receive the word. Are you ready? All right. Okay. I am, I am not, and it's going to be hard for some of you to believe, I am not a scholar. <laughs> My wife laughs. <laughs> I, I am not a Hebrew historian. There are in this single verse, as I read just this last couple of weeks, 
many, many, many scholars, Hebrew historians, Greek historians who disagree on this one verse. This one verse has brought hundreds of years of controversy in the body of Christ. Doesn't that kind of blow you away? One, one little verse. And, and, and one view, if you're taking notes this morning, one view is that if you stop and just say, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. You just stop right there. One view is that the kingdom of, of heaven is like leaven, and it, and it is to be mixed in with the world. It is to be mixed in with society, and we as the body of Christ are supposed to infiltrate the world. Are we in agreement with that? We're supposed to infiltrate society. We're supposed to infiltrate philosophy with the very lives that we live and the word that we preach. Are we in agreement with that? Okay, that's one view. Another view and I'm going to just jump through my notes here a little bit, is the complete opposite. Many scholars believe you're not supposed to stop with heaven is like leaven. Yeast. Leaven is yeast. Does everybody understand that leaven is like yeast? Okay, we're good. All right. Some of you have been enlightened by that very sharing of the testimony. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Then we're not supposed to stop with heaven is like leaven or heaven is like yeast, but we're supposed to continue on with this thought that the impure, because Scripture quite often says yeast or leaven is impure. So the impure infiltrates the pure and changes it, transforms it. Now, Although I don't really care for that view, I want to share with you a little bit this morning. So this is going to do a little bit of teaching, probably a lot of teaching, and a little bit of a application preaching at the end. Okay, you with that? So just stick around. This is a teaching time. Okay? This is teaching time. All right. So let me share with you why I believe that view number two probably holds the most substance. Follow along with me in your notes. Number one, because we have the other parables that precede this, we have the, the, the seed, the sower, the seed is the word of God, and there are birds that are likened to the enemy that come and steal the seed. If we don't protect the seed, if we don't allow it to infiltrate our hearts, the enemy can steal it. We're all in agreement with that. We talked about that a few weeks ago. The second one is the tares, where the enemy sows into the wheat the false. Okay, so we're, we're seeing a little bit of the enemy being involved here a little bit. The third is the mustard seed. We talked about the growth of the mustard seed in that supernaturally that tiny little seed becomes a bush where the birds rest in the branch. There are some scholars that believe those birds resting on the branch are the same birds in the sower and the seed that come and steal the seed. They are evil birds. Don't the crows and magpies around here just get you? You know? It has nothing to do with the message. All right. Okay. Just, just, I just want to share my, my thought there for a second. Okay? Maybe Jesus is continuing a thought and so proceeds this par uh, parable, which interesting to me, he doesn't give an, uh, an interpretation. So I tend to believe that the disciples maybe understand a little bit what Jesus is talking about. So let me share with you. Let's go a little bit further in this teaching time. Throughout Scripture, okay, leaven or yeast is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 19. The two angels come to Lot and they warn him of the wrath of God to come to Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Lot fixes them a meal and in that meal is un leavened bread, because it is understood in Jewish custom that leaven is not good. It is, it is, it is uh, paralleled to evil, okay? So it starts off in Genesis 19. Exodus chapter 12, the children of Israel are getting ready after all these years to leave Egypt, and God sets up the Passover feast, and this is what He says, for seven days do not eat any bread with yeast or leaven. Not only that, Get rid of all leaven out of your household. Okay? 
Are you with me in that so far? We're, we're understanding this a little bit, okay? Hey, go a little bit further to Exodus chapter 34, 25. Leviticus 8, 14, and eight, 14 through 18 is the setting up of the law where God says it is not lawful for the Jewish people, for those who are God's own people, to sacrifice anything that has leaven in it. Only those that were without leaven could be sacrificed to God as part of their offering. Now, not only is it part of the law, but rabbis throughout history have been, have been teaching about leaven in the body, or leaven in the church, or leaven in the synagogue. And it's actually a Greek historian by the name of Plutarch. Would you like that name? Hey, Plutarch, you know. He said this, and I quote, Leaven is generated by corruption and corrupts the mass with which it is mingled. Let's look at the teachings of Jesus. Luke chapter 12, verse 1, Jesus warns the disciples of the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, let's just for a moment, help me out, because we've been talking about the Pharisees. What are some of the dangers of the Pharisees? Pride? Legalism? Hypocrisy? These are all things that Jesus warns the disciples. Stay away from the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees are known for adding to the Word of God. They took the very law of God, which are how many commandments? And added, and added hundreds more. So the Pharisees add to the Word of God. In Mark chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, Jesus warns His disciples of the leaven of Herod. Now, many don't know much about Herod. Herod was this great master plansman, this, this great builder. And if you ever have a chance to go to Israel, if you go to that area and see some of the works of Herod, it's just amazing what this guy could do. But Herod is known for several things. He's known for materialism. He's known for his desire for money. He's known for his desire for women. He's known for immorality, sensuality. He is known for a lot of various things, and what, including that is indulgence. Herod is known for these things, and Jesus warns his disciples, look out for the leaven of Herod. Are you following me so far? One more, Matthew chapter 16, verses 6 and 12. Jesus warns them of the leaven of the Sadducees. They were called Sadducees because they didn't believe in the resurrection, and that is very sad, you see. They didn't believe in the miracles of God. They didn't take all of the Word of God. As a matter of fact, they not, like the Pharisees added to the Word of God, the Sadducees took away from the Word of God. And Jesus says, watch out for those who add to, watch out for those who take away from. We have that warning at the end of Revelation, don't we? For this book of prophecy, do not add to, do not take away from. All right? So Jesus is telling that. Now, I'm going to ask you to keep your fingers here. We're still in our teaching time. And turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. Starting at verse 6, Paul writes this. Your boasting or your glorying in yourselves is not good. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Scott, you're a lump, all right? That you may be a new lump since, here we go, oh, look. Since you truly are unleavened. For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice, which is ungodly character, or with wickedness, synonymous with sin, but the unleavened bread, here you go, of sincerity and truth. So, whether we agree that's what Jesus is saying here in our text, do we agree that a lot of Scripture says leaven is not good for us? Are we okay with that? All right. Hopefully, we'll be able to tie the two together at the end, Lord willing. Deo valente. All right? 
So we have a couple reasons so far of why I think view two is, is, view two is right. The third thing is back to Matthew chapter 13. Let's go there. Now, some translations don't hold this word in there, but I want you to know it's hidden in there in the Greek. The word hid. A woman hid leaven into the flour. Okay? The Greek word, you have it there in your notes. You can try to, you know, try to uh, pronounce it later if you'd like. We won't waste our time with that. But this is what it means, to conceal. A woman concealed into the lump the yeast. One reason why I don't feel that view number one is completely correct is that God doesn't want, whether it's the kingdom of God or the gospel or the people of God that are mixed in with the lump, God doesn't want us to be silent and unseen. Are we agreeing with that? We are to be loud and obnoxious. We are to preach from the housetops. We are to preach in the city squares. We are to go into all the world and preach the gospel. God does not hide us in there where we put on our Christian camo and we are unseen. Well, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I don't want anybody to know. And I don't, I don't, I don't see that in Scripture. All right? Okay? Let me, let me show you another one, the number four. This term in our text, three measures of meal. Now, this is part of the teaching. Get this. I think this is important. This is probably still in its flour form where the leaven or the yeast is thrown into the mix before adding the water, okay? This three measures of meal you're going to see throughout Scripture, and it is equal to an epha, E-P-H-A-H, all right? That three measures of meal is for us in the law as our sacrifice to the Lord. That is the amount that is given to us to sacrifice to God. If you want to dig in it, some of those verses are there for you to do so. Gideon offered three measures of meal to God. And the verses are there for you. Hannah offered to the Lord three measures of meal. Ezekiel commanded the children of Israel to offer to the Lord sacrifice of three measures of meal. So when Jesus says three measures of meal, this is something they had heard before. They understood that. They understood the size of what that would be. Three measures, an ifa. Okay, so they knew how big that piece of bread would be. And it, can you still smell the rolls? They knew how big that would be. You can go all the way back to Genesis chapter 18 where the angels come to Abraham and he and Sarah allow these angels to come in and they set before the angels a feast and in that feast they put together a meal bread made of three measures of meal. Okay, so we see this in scripture. I believe that that three measures of meal, because it is tied with sacrifice, is our sacrifice to the Lord. It's our worship. It's our giving in the offering. It's our daily lives. It's how we love our, our spouse. It's how we raise our children, the fear and the admonition of God. That is our three measures, our sacrifice to God. Are you following me? I believe that our sacrifice is our worship, our praise unto God. I follow, I follow that all the way through Leviticus. It tells us that our worship, our money, and our very lives are our sacrifice. Mike, you did a great job this morning it's in Romans chapter 12. And start off, 12 says, offer your bodies as what? Living sacrifices. Three measures of meal to the Lord. Let's try to pull some of this together now. Are you ready for that? Okay, so the, the teaching time is done. I'm going to step on some toes now. Stick it out there. I'll put mine out there. Okay, you ready? If the bread or the meal is our worship to the Lord, our lives, our giving, we are to allow no impurity in our offering. In our offering, we're supposed to stay away from the leaven of the Pharisees that add to the Word of God. We are to stay away from hypocrisy when we worship the Lord. Can I get on a soapbox for just a moment? 
I won't be there long, okay? So officially on the soapbox. I think that we need to be very careful when we give to the Lord our offering. Because of the leaven of Herod who wanted more. When we give to the Lord, we give with no strings attached. We fully trust that He will take care of every need we have. We don't give, so we'll get. That is the leaven of Herod. And we are to stay away from the leaven in our worship, the leaven of the Sadducees that don't believe in the supernatural. When we worship God, when we pray, shouldn't we believe in the supernatural? So our worship, our giving to the Lord is supernatural. I believe that what we do for the Lord, what we give to the Lord should remain pure, undefiled, uncorrupted. Are you catching that? I believe that the doctrine of the church, especially in the last days, needs to be pure, Scripture-based, not built on any man's new revelation or man's opinion, but on the entire Word of God. And I would appreciate your prayers that as I stand up here from week to week, that I would not allow my opinion or allow my feeling to join into the Word because the Word needs to remain faithful. Because the Bible tells us in the last days, men will not pay heed to sound doctrine, but they'll want their ears tickled. Well, I listen to Pastor so-and-so because he makes me feel good. Or I like so-and-so because he preaches the way I think preaching should be done. We need to be careful with that. I, you know, I have favorite preachers and not-so-favorite preachers. But if I gather to myself their teaching and don't take in the whole Word of God, it becomes a, dun- becomes a dangerous place for me. We need the, the Word of God to be pure and unadulterated. Agreed? We need our lives to remain pure, our thoughts to remain pure, our hearts to remain pure. And the Bible tells us about a pure heart. The Lord loves a pure heart. That means not distracted, undivided. Now, I tell Joanna I love her, and I do. But it would be a whole different ballgame if I told her I loved her and then ran around with other ladies. That's a divided heart. God calls for an undivided heart, a pure heart. Growing up, my mom, along with those rolls, still smell them, made this, made this punch that was, I, I don't know how to explain it. She had several different ingredients. You take one drink, you, you, you taste pineapple. You take another drink, you can taste some Sprite. Take another drink, maybe some strawberries. And, and, and you know what? They kind of mix all those flavors together together in some ways is good, but when it comes to the body of Christ, what do we taste like outside these walls? Do they taste and see that the Lord is good, or are they confused? Well, they say this, but they do this. The Bible sa- there's nobody that, that understands better what the Bible says than those who don't believe. <laughs> they know how we should act, don't they? So our lives then, as our offering to the Lord remains pure, get this, with no leaven, no impurity. I think we'd all agree with that. So let me put the two views together. When our lives are without leaven, without impurity, without adding alloy or dross or anything to our lives, we become exactly what God wants us to be. And When we are what God wants us to be, when we are in the world, we infiltrate the world. We transform the world by the way we live, the words that we speak, the things that we think. So I think in some ways both views are right. Pastor, that sounds a little political. I don't like politics. Sorry, Jerry. I I don't like politics, and I don't think as Christians we need to be political. I think we need to be correct, and when it comes down to the Word of God, 
take both of these thoughts together this morning and say, Lord, I don't want leaven in my life. I don't want the leaven of Herod, materialism and goods and stuff and immorality and indulgence. I don't want the leaven of the Pharisees where I add to the Word of God with my legalism and my hypocrisy. I don't want to take away from the Word of God by my unbelief. I want the Word of God to be real and alive in me. And when I step into the world, they will taste unleavened bread. So I bring it down to this. Let me ask you a couple questions. Some of you in this place today, maybe, maybe you're kind of new to this whole Christian and church thing. And you're learning about the things of God and you've never really come to that point in your life where you, you've accepted the life-giving word of the Lord. You, you've accepted Jesus in your life. I don't think we need to be ashamed of that. Let me ask this question first. Who in the room has given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me see your hand. Okay, so, so we're open and honest here, right? We're family. If you're in that place this morning where you're saying, I need the Lord in my life. I need His transforming power in me. If you're there today, I'm going to ask you to slip up your hand and say, you know, Pastor, I haven't, I haven't made that choice like everybody else in this room or most of the people in this room. I need Jesus in my life. Anybody like that this morning? Raise your hand. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anyone else? Good. Thank you. So the second verse is this. The uh, second question is this. Um, Wow, Pastor, I, I have allowed leaven. By the things I watch, the things I do on the internet, the things I speak, the things I think, I have allowed leaven into, I, I have allowed to come in and change me. And I don't want today to be influenced. I want to be the influencer. I've allowed the things of this world into my life and now I want to be so pure that when pay people hear me, see me, they will taste and see that the Lord is good. And my offering to Him will be pure without any influence of the world. If that's you, would you slip up your hand? That's where I'm at. Yeah, all over this room. Thank you. Oh, God. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as the body of Christ, would you please? Heavenly Father, forgive us for allowing the world to infiltrate us, to leaven us, to change the church, to change the people. Forgive us, God, for allowing corruption, man's opinion world philosophy into our belief system. Forgive us, O oh God. And we not only ask for forgiveness, but today, Lord, we want, to, we want to repent. We want to change directions and follow you wholeheartedly, not half-hearted, not divided-hearted, not distracted-hearted, but fully focused on you that we would not be friends with the philosophy of this age, but friends with You and Your Word and Your Spirit working in us. So, Lord, as the body of Christ, we confess. 
We believe it is your desire that we are the influencers in our society. So, Lord, right now, each one of us in this place and maybe on the Internet today as we watch together, do in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, whatever you want to do as we offer our bodies, as we offer ourselves as sacrifices to you, as we offer our worship, as we offer our finances, as we offer whatever you ask of us, May there be no worldly impurity in our offering. You call, Lord, for a perfect sacrifice. We recognize that we are not perfect, but we want to be as you have called us to be like Jesus. Therefore, Lord, we take the words of Paul to heart to purge out the old leaven. Purge out those impurities. Purge out any immoral character, any wickedness, any sin. Purge it out and follow you wholeheartedly. Grow your church today, Lord, we pray that we might look like Jesus, sound like Jesus, smell and act like Jesus for your glory because that's, it's all about your kingdom. So we take to heart today, Lord, your word. May we be the influencers from this moment on. Help us to be bold. Help us to be pungent and powerful. Help us to not be hidden in the mix, but to do everything you ask us to do. Loudly proclaim the word of truth because it has transformed us. And we give you the praise for it. And everybody said,